Hello everyone and welcome to another impromptu tutorial by Noseman. Because as you already know, Noseman knows. So this morning I had a request about how to unwrap an icosahedron globe just uh, like the ones you see here on your screen and then project some sort of uh, spherical equirectangular image on it so that then if you print this out and cut it properly you can make these nice little globes that have these big triangles but at the same time represent a proper topology of the spherical object you're trying to depict and you can make things like little globes out of paper for your children or friends or just if you're cheap and you don't want to pay for Christmas presents uh, you can always print out a 360 panorama of your living room and provide it to your friends to see how well you live Anyhow, uh, it's up to you to decide. So without further ado, we are going to do this inside Cinema 4D and in the process, we will see some simple polygon editing, some selecting and some UV unwrapping. So in Cinema 4D, in a new scene, we will go to our primitives and add a platonic. And I'm going to make it editable by pressing C on the keyboard. So now this is a mesh object. So the first thing is to bring this little tip here at the top of this object. So let's go to our four views and see what the situation is. You can see that if we go here and rotate it so that this is up here, we will achieve our goal. So let's go to our axes tool. Let's take the rotation tool. Let's rotate around approximately where it is. And you will see that that is precisely 60 degrees. Double click. 60 press enter and then deselect the axis tool and let's zero this out so now if we go to our 3d view you will see that our little globe is standing up the next thing is to define those edges where we want this to unwrap so go to the edge selection tool get your live selection tool and let's move up and let's select all these let's move down press shift and select all these excellent the last thing is to make a cut at the back now we can cut it anywhere we want I'm gonna cut this one so it will open up the whole thing lastly I want to go to this front triangle which happens to face us directly and what I'm going to do is go to polygon mode select it and then command or control click on the points to make a point selection fantastic the last thing is to go to a view that represents the proper view of these little points maximize it let's press h to bring everything to fit in our view and now let's go to our uv editing layout by going to the layout drop down and uv edit fantastic so i want to select the uv polys command a you can see here the default unwrapping of that particular platonic I'm going to go to projection and set this to a frontal projection and then I'm going to go relax UV I'm going to pinpoint the selection for those three points to stay exactly where they are and I'm going to activate cut selected edges and make sure that everything else is deselected apply and uh, the layout is ready the last thing I want to do is go to UV commands and fit UV to canvas to fit it all within our UV square. So our UV unwrapping is final. That's it. Now here's the problem. If I load an image of a globe into this, we're going to be missing these triangles that don't have any UVs. So I need to find a way. I already know it, but now I'm building up the tension. I'm going to find a way to project a 360 image in such a way so that only the triangles that have a UV poly will have part of the texture. So let's go back to our standard layout. Let's select our move tool and our model mode and uh, let's go to our 3D view here. Let's create a material. Double click. Double click the material to open in the material editor. Let's call this globe press enter remove the reflectance and in the color channel we are going to go and load 
a 360 spherical unwrap of the Earth. In the appropriate text folder, I'm going to load this. Here it is. You can download this from the NASA websites and uh, you can find a lot of other interesting images as well. So let's just open it. Let's close this and I'm going to drop it on my object and I'm going to do the following thing. Select the texture tag, go to the tag tab and change the projection to spherical. And if you want to see it better, you don't need to do this. Just go to the editor in the material and set the texture preview size to no scaling, which will give you the full resolution of the image so you can see it in its full glory. And now you can see we're not missing anything because we're projecting from a sphere all the way down to these triangles. Now, how do I take this spherical projection and make it comply to that UV if you press shift and double click on the UV tag, you will see it. You can see the spherical projection. Now, if I click on this, we can see our own projection. And these two are quite different. And uh, this one here, the spherical projection, won't help us with what we're trying to do. So I need to bake this down to this. And let me show you how that is done in a very simple manner. With your object selected, go to the Objects menu in the Object Manager and say bake texture this will give you these attributes first of all i'm going to set the actual file type to png because i like pngs we have a very good relationship we're going to set the resolution i know that this is a two by one aspect ratio so i'm going to make this two thousand by one thousand i'm going to leave everything as it is because the images sampling is okay for me and I'm going to go to the options. I want to bake the color and I want the optimal mapping to be off. So you can choose either cubic or angle, which will recalculate based on that texture. Or if you say off, it's going to use the existing UV map. You can preview this and you can see that hmm, looks sort of okay. And there are some other settings in here which we won't take into account right now. And all I have to do is click Bake. If I now go to the containing folder, and in the root folder, now you have this. This is the result from the baking operation. If you put this together, you're going to have a platonic sphere. But what happens if you need those guidelines so that you know how to cut your cardboard if you want to have some dotted lines or something like that and let me show you how you can do that let's go back to cinema 4d i can now get rid of this i can get rid of this i can create a new material if i wish or i'm going to open this and load that new image and let's select the image here it is and open it and i'm going to close my material editor drag this over here and as i did previously just go to the editor and say no scaling, fantastic, that was remembered. And you can see now we have exactly the same result. The only difference is that this now has been applied using a UVW mapping method. And now I want these creases to be overlaid on my image. How do I do that? Well, let's go back to body paint. Layout, UV edit. Let's go and load this texture. Here, you won't see it because we need to go and open it. Select, press open, and you will see it in here. But now we have those lines overlaid. So what I'm going to do is go to my UV polygons, make sure that they're all selected by pressing Command A or Control A. And if you go to the layers, first, we need to add a layer. So just click here on this button, and this will create a new layer on top. And then the next thing, is to make sure that the thickness of this line is going to be as thick as we want it to. So now I can go to Layer and Outline Polygons, and this is going to create a layer of lines on the newly created layer that has the thickness of the brush. So currently it's set to 2. If I want them to be thicker or thinner, I can change that. Let me make it 1, press Enter, undo this operation, Let's go back to our UV polygons, make sure everything is selected, layer, and outline polygons, and now we're going to have a thin line. Let's save this image, file, save texture as. 
select a format that supports layering like TIFF or Photoshop. Let's go and do a PSD. Press OK. Change the name if you wish. Press Save. And let's see what this image looks like. I opened this file in Photoshop and you can see we have the lines layer which we can turn on and off. We can change its color if we wish so that we can see it over the white background and do anything else we want in order to create our little paper model. When you wrap this up, you will see that everything aligns as you would expect it to. You can apply the same technique for other models like cubes and whatnot. Just be aware that certain models cannot be unwrapped very efficiently or they're going to be quite fiddly when you have to put them together again. So I hope you enjoyed this short tutorial and uh, go ahead and make all your friends presents with this method. I bet you it's going to save you a lot of money.